maybe we should uh, reintroduce ourselves for those who joined later. Also, Jano is now new on with us. I just adjusted my screen here. But maybe first a quick intro. Um, so my name is Hadovan Bast, uh, third workshop day, a super exciting day, and I will say something about it in a moment. Um, I work at the University of Tromso in Northern Norway. If you can see something outside of the window, it's snowing. Hmm. And um, yeah, I, I grew up in uh, computational chemistry, but did more and more computing and programming. And I work half, half of my time with code refinery and then the rest project work helping different research groups with programming and, and teaching programming. And with me today is uh, Jano. Maybe you can say who's hey. this. Uh, good morning. So I'm Jarno Randaharju. Um, I am a research software engineer at Aalto University. Um, so in um, Helsinki, or rather Espo, actually, um, in Finland. And um, I mean, before the research software engineering thing, um, before that job, I was mainly working in computational physics. Um, so you have kind of computational background. Um, I've been involved um, to some extent with code refinery for a few, few years now um, after moving back to the Nordics. And um, well, I guess that's enough about me. Um, should Richard also reintroduce himself? I kind of already have yeah. talked about for, I talked <laughs> yeah. for a while. But yeah. yeah. So I'm Richard Darst. I am the broadcaster today. I've been Code Refinery. I've been involved in Code Refinery for, I guess, about five years now. Um, I work at Alto University in Finland, and. Yeah, I guess mm -hmm. that's so my jobs are mainly divided between teaching and helping people with their software and computation as a research software engineer. Super. Let's start. I want to show everybody how to find the place where we will be today. Um, either on top of the hack and is linked to the schedule. Also, we will be posting here always the link where are we right now. HackMD is the place where we invite you to add questions, add comments. For the live stream participants, there is also here some information on how you can participate in the upcoming exercises. For the, for the exercise teams, we will show you how to do that. So this is really for information for the live stream participants. And today uh, we are in day three on the schedule and we will do collaborative distributed version control. So while on day one and two, we were mostly working on our laptops, computers, and um, okay, we, we uploaded the GitHub, the Git repository to GitHub and we cloned it again. Today, we will really collaborate. So I will go in here. It will be a really exciting day and exciting lesson. And it's really exciting for, for us here in the studio because we don't really know what will happen. This is, for me, one of the most interesting days because we, uh, we will be coding together. And we don't really know what you will do. And we will react to it. It's a bit like programming improv. So there will be a lot of improv. It will be fun. Um, probably also some mistakes. And they are really pedagogical. It's the most fun part and the most pedagogical thing is when, when something goes wrong and we try to fix it together. <laughs> yeah. Just to give you an overview, we will, I will, we will start with some concepts. And I will, I will lead the session, but hopefully I get also questions from Jano, also questions from Richard. This will be short. We will then very soon start with an exercise. The exercise will be longer and we need to explain it well. So we'll ex we will explain that exercise well. After that, we will collaborate in the um, 
uh, in exercise groups and we have with live stream participants, Jana will lead the centralized workflow session. And then we will take it one step further and we will collaborate through forks. And uh, the central thing today is pull requests or merge requests is the same thing. Different names, same, same idea. And code review and collaboration. And then we will close today by discussing how can you make changes to other people's repository? What, what are good practices there? Ready, ready to go into the first episode? Yeah, maybe we can also say at the beginning already that there'll be the exercises we're doing are very synchronized between different people. So someone needs to do something, we need to react or two people need to react together. So if there's ever times when uh, we need to go slower, just tell us right away and we'll clarify. We'll try to be very clear about this now, but um, yes, please let us know. Okay, so let's begin. Let's go into it. So a few concepts and this is a little bit of also recap from day one and two, I will zoom in. So here we are moving now from, from our laptop, from a single person project to multiple people project. There are a few terms that we remember from day one and two, but I think still good to, to repeat what, what does that mean. One term is repository. Repository is the whole Git repository, all the commits, all the branches, tags. Is there anything else in there? I think that's it. I guess also the working tree, at least I would include mm -hmm. that. Yes. So the, the files that you're actually editing right now. Yes. And then we, we met commits. When we committed, we created new commits. It's like a snapshot. Um, they were recorded. Each of them got this, this long identifier. And then we liked to draw these commits as boxes. So down there, and I will, we will explain this, this drawing. Each box is a commit and they, they are related because almost every commit has a parent commit. This full image is now showing things that we haven't actually talked about yet. But, yeah. um, but the small image inside the image is showing uh, it's, it's something we saw already. Mm -hmm. And then we met uh, branches. Branches were an, a name pointing to a commit. I like to think of it as a sticky note. And here in this picture, maybe can I let's see what happens if I zoom in? And, Maybe we can not focus on anything. Oh, no, we need to change the, <laughs> it doesn't zoom in. Um, so here in this picture, there is, an, there is a master branch and there is an idea branch and an experimental branch. There is also a tag here, version 1.0. So we, we have also met tags and branches and tags are, they. They are similar like a branch, but they just never move. And they have metadata attached to them. So this we recognize. Uh, what, what is new? OK, we have seen this yesterday, but too briefly, is cloning. And what is completely new is forking. What happened when we cloned? Uh, here, this cloud um, is, is a cloud service. It's, it could be a GitHub, it could be GitLab, it could be uni the university, the Git repository hosting. Um, today we will work a lot through, through GitHub. So when we cloned, we copied, cloning is this arrow here. We copied the whole repository with all the commits, all the branches, all the tags. We made a copy to our computer. Then we, got a, we had a local copy of everything. And in addition, uh, the, the clone remembered where it was cloned from. And, and there is this term called origin. Origin is the place where we clone from. 
Um, so in this picture, we see the tags also at the cloud. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure how important the question this is. Um, I'm, at least when you push, you don't actually push the tags. Um, yeah, but when you clone, you get them. OK, all right. But yesterday, there was there was the yeah, there was a question in the HackMD about that yesterday. So yeah, um, yeah. because what pushing, we did yesterday get you the tags. We pushed only we pushed uh, main or master. I don't remember one of the two, and then we pushed only that branch. We could have pushed all the branches, and we could have also pushed a tag or all the tags. Yeah. But when we clone, we get everything. That's great um, because there then we get a, backup. Mm -hmm. A question on the HackMD also. Um, what? is uh, what does the uh, word origin here mean um and i mean it is essentially it's just a name so it can be changed yeah uh, but okay. when you run a git clone it will create a remote um called the origin and that is where the clone is coming from so i mean it is just a name but it's also automatically there so it's kind of default it's an excellent question because i forgot to say that uh, when we cloned it wasn't just a copy it, it made a copy, but it renamed it renames all the branches. Instead of idea, it renamed it to origin idea. Instead of master, origin master. Instead of experimental, origin experimental. In addition, as we will see in the exercise, it will, in addition, create for me a local master branch where I can work on. We will come back to that. Yeah. And then there is this other new concept, fork, which we will see in approximately one hour again. So that's another way of copying a repository. It technically, technically a clone and a fork are very similar. The difference is that when we fork a repository, we create a copy that stays on GitHub or GitLab. It stays in the cloud service, but we copy it from somebody's namespace, somebody's user space. So I could fork a repository from Yano into my user space. Or I could fork a repository from the code refinery organization into my user space. And today so we'll, importantly, hmm. you do not need to have edited. You don't need to be able to edit the original repository to fork it. Um, so you can go, you can find, let's say, NumPy, which is a numerical library for Python um, on GitHub. Um, I mean, of course, it has a huge number of developers, and um, it's a big project. But you can go ahead and fork it to your own user um, on GitHub and then edit it. Um, yeah. So I guess this is kind of, uh, this is the main point we will come back to later. But that's um, one mm -hmm. reason why it's so useful. Yes, because in the, when we fork, we don't have to modify. Sometimes we cannot modify here. And the nice thing about uh, the forking workflow, which we'll see, is that we can make changes to any public repository. And we will learn how to. So these two are really important concepts, cloning, forking. There are other ways to copy a repository, but I don't think I want to go into it. It's here. It's mainly we will use this generating from template and importing. We will only use it to set up the exercise repositories. So this is not important for all the participants. This is really only important for us who set up the exercises. And it is important for the exercise needs. Do we want to say more here? Of course we can. I don't know. But uh, I don't want to co confuse too much. Mm, uh, yeah, I think it's it's better to just move on. This is something the exercise leads will do uh, yep. mainly. But we will also show you how to. Should we try to do this? Visit one of the repositories that we have used recently and try to find out how many forks exist and where they are. Yeah, let's do it. Something we have used recently. So maybe one of the code panel lessons. Or... Let's check one thing that we are using right now. Yeah. The Git collaborative lesson. Um, this is a repository on GitHub. This is the material that we are teaching at this moment. If you see mistakes, please send us pull requests and you will learn how to. 
and there are already 36 forks. And if I want to know where they are, click here, and here are all the, all the forks. And this can be really useful to get an overview over the forks, because if this is your own project, it can be really fun to see who is who has forked my project, what are they doing with this? Maybe they have some really interesting new features that I would like to have as well. Then I can contact them and ask them whether they would like to contribute these changes back to my repository. Very nice feature. Really important today is something that we have mentioned just in passing in maybe on day one is, is that when we did commits and we created branches on our computer, they didn't get automatically synchronized over to GitHub at the same time. We need to do it actively. And all the almost all the commands that we did so far, they were all local commands. They, nothing was traveling over the network. And the very few commands which, which actually use the network and we, which synchronize between the repositories is, they are here on this, in this box. There is git clone to make a copy. And then we will see there are three commands to, to share changes or to pull changes. And they are, so there is push and pull. And there is also fetch. So fetch is somehow, there, there is a difference between pull and fetch. Hopefully we will clarify that. But maybe the most two, if you, if you don't want to know what fetch does, the two most important ones are pull and push. The pull will mostly do the thing you want it to do. And um, I think you will probably run into fetch when you're trying to do something more fancy or complicated. Yeah, and uh, something I would would do now on the HackMD, and I will do that, I, will, some, I could write down that when you do git pull, it's actually git fetch plus git merge. Yeah. But we will clarify that. But the take home message is uh, everything is, all the operations are, don't involve any network, only clone, pull, and push, and also fetch. So um, essentially, the Git repository, um, I mean, and this is kind of the thing that makes Git so powerful, is that um, every repository is a standalone thing. It works on its own, and it contains all the information necessary for, uh, for Git to work. So um, there is, in from Git's point of view, there is no central repository. Mm -hmm. um, so. But yeah, what that means is when you commit something to your own repository, it doesn't automatically go anywhere online. Uh, you need to actively push it to that other repository uh, that's on GitHub. Yes, and I think we have some pictures on the next episode. And maybe we can go to the next episode. And I wonder, should I continue sharing? Do you want to take the screen share? It's probably easier if I take over the screen share mm -hmm. because I will be actually doing uh, the exercise. So just a moment. Somehow the Zoom toolbar is in the wrong place. Oh no. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I mean, dual monitor mode and I'm not used to it. So um, I will start sharing now. And I'll just make this window a little bit bigger. That's the HackMD. But here is the episode. And let's go to the centralized workflow episode. Okay, so um, this is uh, the centralized workflow. Um, well, the centralized workflow for collaborating on Git um, is, well, it is the sort of uh, natural next step that we basically, um, we saw the parts already yesterday. So we, we cloned repository, we pulled from repository, and we pushed to a repository. And now the big difference here is that we will have multiple people working on the same uh, same repository, the same code. So, um, and this of course opens doors to a lot of things already. So, um, well, why don't we just get to it? Um, Should we have a look at this drawing or? Yeah. 
so okay so this is a good um good illustration of what it is what it means uh, so this, it's a centralized workflow because there is one central repository which i just said that git doesn't uh git doesn't know that it's a central repository but we make it central um mm -hmm. and in this exercise the central repository will be on github so or, or if you do the gitlab version um, there is a gitlab version as well and then um, this is what we call an origin often yeah yeah so essentially um yesterday we cloned the repository and um and we pushed to it now multiple people are going to clone the same repository uh work on the code and push changes to that same repository Mm -hmm. And there are some um, some things that can happen when uh, so some um, some special cases we need to we need to think about, but um, that is that is really the essential idea. So we will have the repository online. Multiple people can work on it at the same time, and um, and then we can all merge the changes to one place. And for um, this to work, yeah. yeah, go ahead. So okay, so this will um, also include the pull requests that Richard already mentioned uh, before we started. So I think this will become clear the most easily, uh, most quickly when we actually go into, um, we start walking through the workflow. Um, but yeah, okay, there's a couple of um, special features with this workflow. So um, everyone who's working on the, the central repository here, everyone who's working on this project. Um, they all need to have access, um, read and write permissions on that repository. Uh, so uh, it, it works if everyone here is, uh, everyone who's working on it is in the same uh, group, same organization, or you know, it work, is, um, everyone knows each other um, in some way. And this is because, this is also the reason why uh, in, for the last few participants, I've been asking you, like, if you want to participate in this exercise, please, uh, I, I need to know your GitHub username so that I can add you. Yeah. Uh, and the same thing will later happen in the exercise groups. You will, uh, the participants will communicate their GitHub usernames to the to the exercise lead, and exercise lead will add them as a collaborator. Because in this setup, we all need to be able to, we all need permissions to be able to push branches. And the, also, the setup is suitable for most groups. I think for smaller groups, most research groups, this is how uh, most of our uh, most of our code refinery work we use this this setup with the centralized workflow. We we give people in the project uh, write permissions, but we, as we will also learn that it's not necessary to give write permissions because anybody will be able to uh, submit changes. But we will do that as a second step. Yeah. Then they have to use the other, the forking workflow, which we yeah. will get to. Yes. Um, yeah. So, and um, I guess that's an important point. So even when you have a really big project and um, there's a lot of contributions coming from not the core team, coming from people who don't have access to the, the main repository, there will usually still be a uh, a core team that has access and will probably be using this central workflow. Uh, at least a lot of the time. So uh, this also allows a lot of uh, useful features like code review and um, using pull requests, which, uh, yeah, um, well, I mean, we will see uh, how they work and it will be much clearer than me trying to explain it here. And what we will do now, I think we will, we will explain, we will explain both the preparation of the exercise and it will be slightly different for the teams and it will be also different for live stream and we will i think we will walk you through what we expect from you in the exercise step and then uh, what will be different today is that we will during the exercise we will not be silent here with Jana, but we will then work together with the live stream participants that will be different yeah okay so um should we just go into the exercise um, I mean, go into ex explaining the exercise. I think good idea. We, we we should show how to set it up. Yeah, this is important for the exercise leads. I also know that there are some teams that don't have an exercise lead, and then I 
recommend that you decide one of you will do it. Yeah. So, yeah. So um, every team should have one person, uh, but not not everybody uh, needs to do this. But every team should have one person who um, who does well this next thing in the workflow. So I will click on this link to open um, the template central work, centralized workflow exercise. And it's open here now since I clicked it. Now, um, my view here is quite narrow, so I don't actually see. Maybe I should make it wider and then just show it to you. OK. Mm -hmm. So there is this use this template button. Um, I'll just click it. I will not actually uh, generate the repository because uh, Radovan already did that. Uh, Maybe I missed the... this. This is for the exercise leaders or live this stream This is for people? the exercise leads, yes. OK. Yeah, thanks uh, for reminding. Um, so yeah, only the exercise leads. And um, if you don't have an exercise lead, then one person in, in your group um, should do this. So you can give the uh, repository a name. Um, and this is something you share with everyone in your group. Um, and yeah, the description is not that important here, but. Can I ask what should yes. people do who don't have any team and who don't want to participate now through live stream exercise? I think we recommend them to, you can set it up for yourself. It, I think it can be somehow meaningful even if yes. you want to practice on your own. So also then so, you should. Okay, yeah? so yeah, there are three options. Radovan has already communicated about two. Um, there is the recorded central workflow exercise repository. If you submit there, your changes will be visible in the live stream or maybe. Uh, may be visible in the live stream. There is also the centralized workflow exercise that doesn't have the word recorded in it. And um, if you submit there, you can still go through the workflow, um, but it will not be shown on the live stream. And the third option is that um, you are a team of one. You go through this step, you, cre um, you um, go to this uh, template, you click on generate from template, give it a name and click create from template. And um, then you can uh, clone it and make changes and push uh, on your own and even do the code review for yourself. So you can do all the steps with just one person. Um, it, it's kind of cooler with more people, I would say, because uh, you see other people's changes and not just your own, but um, the steps are the same. So you can practice through this workflow um, with just one person. OK. Um, maybe I should just now close this and go to our pre-made exercise repository, which is here. There are also some questions. I don't know who my team is. So if you don't know who your team is, then I guess you don't have one. Teams are only a concept in our organized Zoom. And you find the teammates yeah. in your breakout room. Right. And in this case, please scroll up in HackMD and maybe participate in the live streamed one. And you can choose whether you want to be on the one that we record and stream or the one that we will not show at all. Yeah. And I guess if there's any confusion of the rooms, of the teams, or your team is missing or something, you can watch the live stream and participate as the live stream participant or find another team which is smaller and ask if you can join their room. Yeah. I mean, anyone can participate in the live stream version of this exercise. So if, um, if you have any problems, that's always an option. Okay, um, now the next step is that you need to have your GitHub account added to the repository. Um, so like I said, everyone needs to have permission. Um, making this wide again to see all the buttons. And then I have to move this, uh, scroll a bit to the right. And there is a settings button here. Now, slight problem, I already have access to this and Radovan already has access to this. So, but you can go in the, in the settings. Now you are, by you, I mean the person who created the repository. You can go to the collaborators and teams. 
I make the window narrow again, I will scroll to the right to show this part. Um, and you can add people um, here or add teams here, but I mean, I guess mainly you would add people uh, by their GitHub username. And here I can add that once you add somebody, they still need to do something because what if I add somebody to a repository, GitHub will send them an invite email and say that Jano invited you to GitHub repository so and so. Do you accept this invitation? So you need to go to to the email which is attached to which you used when you registered in GitHub and accept it. And only then, yeah. after that, you get uh, permissions. Oh, there is one more thing I want to say that everybody should do or could, should we talk about this unwatching? Yes, I think now is the right time to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. So right now I'm actually watching this repository, which means I I get notifications for all activity in this repository, which is probably not what I want when, um, well, I don't know how many tens at least of people will be submitting their uh, changes to this repository. So I probably want to just ignore um, anything that comes from this particular repository. I could also just look at the things whether that I'm participating to or where I'm mentioned, but um, I will just ignore. This I one. recommend to in fact take the first option, the participating, because oh, it will be okay. you will be informed about you will get emails about the pull request that you have sent, and only if somebody so if it's if it's your contribution okay, and ignore that. everything else. And that this is what I would do for any other repository. So maybe that's just the right thing to do while teaching as well. So um, yeah, for almost any other repository, um, I will always choose this participating. And um, I guess you cannot see the at mentions here. But yeah, uh, whenever someone mentions me or um, whenever something happens with a pull request that I'm part of, then I will get a notification. And there is one more thing that I did when I set up this repository, and that was I protected the master branch. Should we show how to do it? Or should we mention it? We can come back to it later. Um, it's probably good to do before going into the exercise. So this is again in the settings. Mm -hmm. Whoops, um, it went a bit over. And then in branches, I think. Yes. And again, this is only important for the wider. exercise leads. Uh, yeah, so only one person per group needs to do this. There is and here default. I protected the master branch, and you can click on edit down there, down to the right. Yeah. Just Yarno, to see what did I. Hmm? Can you yes. zoom out so people can see all your screen? Like all the window? Yes, uh, I will make okay. the window smaller again. Mm. And now I can zoom out, and that's a good idea. Okay, there's a okay, question. Should I yeah, uh, start this is good. again? So, yeah. Here I can click edit and then uh, choose require a pull request before merging. Yes, um, so I clicked on require pull request and I unchecked require approvals. This okay. is not incredibly important. I wanted to mention it that this is what I did. And the motivation why I did that is that this way nobody can push to the master branch directly, accidentally or willingly. And we will later motivate why this, that's might be a good thing to protect for if you work in a team and all the contributions will, will come in through code review. Yeah. And Richard, you mentioned there was some question that you wanted to raise. No. Uh, so there was, I think I'm answering it now. Mm, okay. Yeah. So should we move on? So yep. we did the watching and watching. Um, should we? Is it time to go on to the exercise, or should we do it on um, live first? Because I'm just looking whether there's anything that we need to. Just give me a sec. Whether there's anything that we absolutely need to. So emphasize. there is question 29. Uh, I don't see use this template in centralized workflow exercise recorded. 
I got right. the invitation in email before. Does this mean I don't need to do this step? So I guess this is a difference between the leaders and yeah. So um, if you got an invitation, if, if you got the invitation email to this repository, then um, that means you're doing the live stream version, or at least that allows you to do the live stream version. Um, and then you do not have to uh, create a repository from a template. So you will be using this one, uh, the one that already exists. If you, um, if you got that, but you're also in a team, then um, you can ignore that. Um, invitation and use a team repository. Okay. So question number 31 says, will it be clear as soon as learners should do something and exercise leaders? So right now, what should exercise leaders be doing? So exercise leaders should be um, creating the repository from the template first, and then they um, they should be adding all the learners in their groups to that repository. But the adding adding of the learners is much easier once you are in the Zoom group, Zoom room because then you can exchange usernames. Yeah. Okay. So I think right now exercise leads should okay maybe just not create a anymore. repository. Yeah. And so and then get everybody's at the right place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do we demo first or do we go into groups and make sure that everyone's in their group of a story. Yeah, I'm wondering what we should do. We, maybe we, we demo the start of it. So that, that it's clear to all the, all the learners what they will need to do when they start. Yeah. So that way people don't need to move back and forth between breakout rooms and uh, the live stream, which is probably a good idea. Yeah. Okay. So let's do the demonstration. So the demonstration is um, clone the repository and then um, I will just do that first and then I will think about what's the next thing. So this is again the uh, centralized workflow exercise repository and you will do the same thing with your exercise leads repository or um, the centralized, rep uh, the live stream repository if you are using that one. Yeah. So uh, we did this yesterday. And yes. can I just here also reemphasize that you don't want to clone any template. The template that we mentioned before is only to set up the exercise. We yeah. have set up the exercise here already. This is what the exercise leads will do. And almost everybody will clone something that is not called template. Yeah. So in fact, if you see the template uh, button here, that probably means that you're looking at the wrong repository. So a template repository has the create from this template button. The repository that has been created doesn't have that button. Um, all right, this one does not have that button. So I'm in the right place. Okay, so um, I'm going to use the SSH version of uh, this URL. I copied it and then uh, I will just check that I'm in the right folder. Okay, that looks good. And then I'm going to type git clone and then should paste. Should we take a time, yes. should we do a quick poll and see who needs more time? Do we have time to synchronize? Do yeah, I think it's a good idea. Okay. okay. Please vote here if you need more time. So to be clear, what should what people should have done now is well, only exercise leaders should have done something, and that is to create a repository from the template. And so if so you are not an exercise lead, then you don't need to do anything yet. Yep. So right now, nobody should do anything. Almost just watch what we do because that you will have enough time to do that in the in a moment. Try to type it correctly. Okay. Can we take a pause and say what the ultimate goal of what we're doing here is? So we're trying to make a single, so everyone should have one other repository they have right access to. So 
if you're in a team, then your team leader is making this one repository. If you're yeah. in the live stream only, I mean, if you're not with a team, exists. then we've made uh, one and we're giving everyone right access to there. So, so um, yeah, if you're in the live stream, or if you're not in a team, you want to do the live stream version, you need to ask to be added to the repository. So when I said that only exercise leads need to do something, that was actually not right. Yeah. Um, exercise leads need to do something. People who are in a group, but are not exercise leads. So learners in groups don't need to do anything. Yeah. Um, but if you are a learner um, who is not in a group, um, you're just following the live stream, then um, you should uh, you can ask access uh, to these uh, workflow exercise repository. So the metaphor here is that you have your friends or research group and you're working yeah. on a project together and whoever set it up is sharing it with you. Yeah. Okay. So I see three um, votes for need more time and a good number of votes for I'm up to date. Um, yeah. Should we go on anyway? Maybe we can go on because there will be enough time. We will give people enough time to catch up. Right now, we want to yeah. show what 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 will be expected in a moment. Yeah. Okay. So maybe I will actually cancel this command and type it in again. Uh, so now, when in the breakout room, uh, when you have the created repository and you have access to it, then you will be able to clone it. And um, I will choose the SSH option, which most of you are using, but just based on what I saw on HackMD yesterday. OK, and then I type git clone and paste in the URL. And I will clone it into a folder called centralized workflow exercise. Press Enter. And now I'm getting a copy of the repository. OK. So there's some, I mean, I guess it's not that important to try to read what's, what it prints here because it's a kind of git details, but there is a folder. So and let's what see. Do, what do we expect then from people? We expect that, um, and maybe we know we, we will not have to go through all the steps, but let's, let's give the big picture. We will expect that you will clone the exercise. You will create a new branch. Uh, first, that's the first step, and it's a really good first step very often. Create a new branch for a new thing. And on that branch, we ask people to create a new file. And it's really good if the new file that you create has a unique name. This way we avoid conflicts of s several people creating the same file name with different content. One way to do that is to, the, to give your the file name your username, but it can be anything else. Also note that what we will do here uh, with Jano together, we will share the recorded one, but still for everybody else, the, the, what we do here, it goes on public GitHub. And let's remember the code of conduct also. So let's not put any weird things in there. We, you can later remove the exercise repository. We will remove the exercise repositories, but um, we are creating temporarily a public repository here. And what are we asking our participants to put in there, in, into that file? One idea is to share, your, share a short cooking recipe. It can be your favorite cooking recipe. It can also be a Git trick that you, that some Git feature that you really like, something you discovered in the last two days that you would like to share with others. So put that, put that into the unique file. And then, then you will push, you will git, git add, git commit. You will push this new branch to the repository and all the, all the instructions are in this exercise. So you can follow these instructions. And after you have pushed, uh, push the branch, you will create a pull request. So yeah, maybe we should demonstrate that or yeah, um, demonstrate that live as well. 
so it's easy to follow. But yeah, the, the end result should be mm. that you are making a change or suggesting a change using a pull request, and then someone else can look at it and accept it. Yeah, I mean, if you think it's useful, we could also demonstrate it before we send people to the exercise room. Um, well, yeah, um, that was, well, yeah, I think that's probably useful. Okay, let's do it. And then people can follow the, um, people can and also follow the exercise in the, um, in the course materials. Yep. But it's probably good to see it first. So, okay, so I uh, moved into the, um, I have moved into the repository, so I will just check BWD to see where I am. Okay. And there's nothing, oh, well, actually, there is something in the repository. There's a readme file. Okay. But what I now want to do is, well, I want to change this and I want to add a new file. So uh, first I will create a new branch uh, and you create a new branch with the git branch command. I'll give it some good descriptive name. Um, I'll start with my own name just uh, to avoid having uh, two branches with the same name. And um, let's do a panel, okay. And so that's the name of my new branch. And then I will move into that branch. So to move into a branch, I use git checkout, right? Yes. This is um, things we did yesterday and the day before, but it's of course good to um, uh, good to do things many, multiple times, uh, good to get some practice. So uh, now I'm in, um, in this new branch. And um, let's add a new file and I'll use nano, not git because um, I think there were more people using nano in the HackMD. Um, okay, so let's add a recipe. So boil milk whole, add tablespoon, how do you, okay, I'll write it out, tablespoon of yeah. um, lemon juice. And then we can say three magic happens and then four finished. <laughs> okay, yeah, rinse out, uh, way done, okay. And then let's exit, save. So control X, exit, Y to save. And then I already gave it the file name. So I keep the one it's suggesting here. That's the annual recipe. And now LS will tell me what files are there and indeed the new file is there. Okay, but it's not in Git. So I need to Git add the annual recipe and then commit it. Add new recipe is a good description, I think. Actually, if so everybody's adding a new recipe, then maybe it's not very descriptive anymore, but let's go with it. Okay. And now it's still not online. Let's just check actually. So I reloaded the page. I'm looking at the branches, view all branches. Um, yeah, it's just not there. So these are two separate repositories and the fact that something has happened locally on my laptop doesn't mean that it's on GitHub. So git push, um, and um, since I cloned, now there is a, um, there's a remote called origin. That is the GitHub that I cloned from. So that should exist. And the dash U is required because I'm pushing this branch for the first time. So I need to give it, I need to create a new branch on GitHub as well. Yeah, there is, a, there is an explanation in the material what that means. The minus yeah. two, I think we don't need to go more. Yeah, um, it just needed at this point. And if you forget it, then Git will actually tell you exactly what to do. So it's not that important. Um, okay, so it now created a new branch and it has immediately appeared here. Git is in fact, no Git, not Git, but GitHub is in fact, um, suggesting to me that I probably want to now create a pull request from this. Um, and that's part of the exercise, right? Creating the pull request. 
this yes. part of the exercise. And maybe should we show that? Should we stop there? Because the, the goal of the exercise will be to send the pull request. Or well, maybe we can go ahead, yeah. just one more click. Yeah. So just click here to create a pull request. And in fact, a second click. So now I'm scrolling. There's some maybe questions. Too much. Should people be typing along or waiting for the exercise session? Uh, you don't need to type along now. Doing this is the exercise, essentially. So, um, okay. Yeah, you can wait for now and do it then in the breakout room. Okay. Okay. Um, let's say I just, um, I mean, usually you would write some descriptive comment here. Um, add new recipe is descriptive enough. Um, okay. And this and, is OK, already... sorry, maybe I did it too quickly, but yeah, there's the big green button um, that I pushed. And that's usually the thing you want to do with the GitHub interface. OK, so now there is a pull request, and the first part of the exercise, or the first exercise, is done. So what we want is that soon the exercise will start. Then everybody can start typing and creating these repositories and files. And we want everybody to get to this point where they send the pull request. Yeah. But we will review these pull requests then together, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So if you follow the material, it will be up to including up to step eight. And as you do that, you will there will be new questions coming up, but then we will react to these questions. So you will try it out, collect questions, and then we will together uh, do code review on these pull requests. Okay, so um, I guess it's time to start the exercise then. Yeah, I also wonder what we do with break. Do we do break, exercise then? We do exercise, break then? It's almost 11 already. Maybe it's best to do the uh, break first. The sort of downside, um, I mean, I guess we can trust that you take your break. But um, yeah, uh, at least I would be tempted to first do the exercise and then take the break if I was um, a learner here. So. Yeah, so what we can say is that five minutes after the hour, Jano and me will start exercising here together with the live stream participants. And then the, the exercise groups can start creating these exercise repositories and working on cloning, creating a branch, committing, filing a pull request. What time, what time will we be back here after the exercise? What time do we expect people back? Um, so I guess we can give full time to this exercise, and um, that's... So I will give minutes. minimum 15, 20 minutes, maybe. We can also see how things are going through the HackMD. Yeah. But that would mean that would be we would be back 25 minutes past the hour or later. Yeah. All right, let's do that. Yeah, and so for the yeah, last right few yeah, OK, so break until uh, 5 past, and then exercise until 25 past. OK. Sounds good. OK, see you later. Okay. Hi, we are back from, from the break. Um, now we recommend all those who are part of a team to work through this exercise together with your team up and including step eight. And then you can return here to the, to the stream. Um, what do we recommend the live stream participants to do? Maybe we give you some time to, <clears throat> to work on your own and we will not talk, talk over it so that you don't have to mute the stream. How about we give you 10 minutes or something, and then we start together with Jano. I can also go through these steps uh, then on stream. Yeah. Sounds good. So we'll be we'll be silent for the next 10 minutes, and so you don't have to mute. And then we start working also on our side. Right, we are here uh, together with Jano, we will work on this exercise, but we recommend then those who are now in two, two rooms, maybe you can mute uh, Twitch and unmute 
either 25 minutes past. If you need more time, let us know where I can be. Maybe we will come back half past. And then don't, don't remember, oh, please remember to then unmute again Twitch once you come back. All right. And what we can try now is that we also collaborate here through this through this exercise. Should I take the screen and make a contribution as well? Mm, yeah, sounds good. Okay. I have it. Here is the repository. First step uh, for me will be to clone it to my computer. And I made sure that I cloned the, the right exercise here. I copy this git clone the long address, and then I can give it a name. I will call the folder centralized workflow exercise. I step in and first thing before I do anything, I will create a branch and I will call the branch. I will do it in one step. I will create a branch and switch to it. And I will call it other one and git trick because I want to share a git trick that I use, a git feature that I use a lot. Git status to make sure that I'm on the right branch. And now I will create a file called Hopefully it's unique. Let's see. Oh, git commit minus b this is something I use a lot. This shows me the difference I'm about to commit. in the uh, commit log editor. All right, save, yes. Git status, I'm on the wrong branch. This is still untracked. Git add, git commit. And I can even show you now what, the, what this, how this thing looks. Git commit minus v. What it does, it shows me the difference here in the commit message editor. I like to see that. It's committed. So far, it's still only on my computer. How do I get this thing to GitHub? I need to push it to origin. If I don't remember what, where did I clone from? What does origin mean? I can do git remote minus b or dash dash verbose if I want to type more. And it will tell me that I cloned from origin. Origin was this place. So whenever I refer to origin, I, I refer to this web address. And now to share my branch, git push origin, another one, git trick. So I'm pushing this branch where to, to origin. What is origin? Origin is this place. Ready? Yes. The GitHub noticed that I pushed a new branch. And it suggests me to create a pull request. Another option to create a pull request is to follow this link. So it also gives me this link. And if I visit this link, it will bring me to the same place as if I bring push this green button. Well, that was, I was just about to ask, um, what do you do if the green button doesn't appear? Because um, that's what I always click, but then sometimes um, it just doesn't recognize that this is a, yeah. a new thing that could be a... Yes, what if, it, what if it's not there? Several options I can do. <clears throat> One option is I can click here on top of pull request. 
and I can create a new pull request. I can maybe, possibly I see this, or I don't see it, but then I can create a new pull request here. That's one option. The other option is that I click on branches. There are now 14 branches, 14 people have pushed some changes. And on the branch, I can now try to find my branch, which is this one. In fact, I have sent two pull requests, so there's also another one. But I did that earlier. And I can create a pull request from here. So all of these lead to the same, the same result. Let's go maybe back to the, the most common one is to click here. And now first thing, the first thing I verify when create a pull request is from which branch to which branch. Um, I give the pull request a title. I can give here more context. I can refer to, to some discussion or issue. Also, before I normally push the green button, um, I have a look at what are the commits that go in, what is the change that I'm sending. If I see here commits that that I don't recognize, then maybe I messed up somewhere, then I pause and reevaluate. So this is the commit I wanted to send, this is the change. Yes, I will just take a note that we should later comment on how do we make changes to, pull, to existing pull requests. Mm, yeah, but, that's a good point. So we can come back maybe to Maybe we yeah, can first around. create a pull request and then yeah. yeah, come back to it with, uh, um, with everybody. Yeah. Actually, it's 25 past now, so. Yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm ready to create it. Yeah. And it's created. And in a few moments, we will then change roles and we will look at this as, as a reviewer. Um, so we had the poll in the HackMD, do you need more time? Um, it's 25 past now. If you have unmuted, you will hear me. If you haven't, then I guess you will not. Uh, but I'm moving the question to the bottom of the HackMD um, just to make it more findable. Mm -hmm. And um, are people seeing the HackMD right now? OK, so we're getting a few more answers there. Should we broadcast a message to Zoom rooms to unmute Twitch? I guess that's a good idea, right? Yes. yes. OK, yes, please do. And please do me, or let's see if Thor I will do it. OK. It looks like we're getting a lot of, uh, no, I don't need more time answers. Sounds good. Maybe yeah. we can then restart here. Yeah. And I think right now, it would be really good to mention that this worked for some people, but there's lots of things that could go wrong here. If something has gone wrong, don't worry. So it doesn't mean that you're doing something wrong or you can't do it. There's time to try again later, if you would like. And also, throughout the rest of the workshop, we'll be doing similar things. So if things are confusing, if something's gone really wrong, personally, I would recommend saying, just don't worry, carry on, and try for the next exercise. Yeah. Would you agree with that analysis? Absolutely. I mean, there are many things, many new things coming in now, and mm. it takes time to digest it. Yeah, and uh, yeah, when you're collaborating with many people, there's many changes happening at the time. We have 11 pull requests here now. Um, mm -hmm. Many things have changed, so yeah, things can go wrong. Yeah. So what we let's maybe have, let's have a look what we have right now. What have we so far? Uh, we will here look at the live stream exercise. 
but the, but the, the different teams can then look at they they can look at their exercise repositories in, in parallel. And before reviewing these pull requests, I wanted that we have a look at uh, what I clicked here on insights and on network because I wanted to show you that we started from from the master branch, but now you have we see a couple of branches here and we see commits. Some branches have already been merged to master. Maybe because we we were a little bit too trigger happy with the green button. It's not a problem. Um, we will motivate in a moment that it's really good to not merge your own changes, but to, have, to let somebody else review. So we have lots of branches. Uh, most of them have not been merged yet. Uh, Jano, do you want to take the screen? Should I keep the screen? Or how do we want to go from here now that we review the changes? Um, yeah, I guess I can review your changes. Uh, one thing that I wanted to mention though here is um, because there was a question and maybe this is already answering it, this screen here. So uh, what do you do if you want to update or change your pull request? Uh, this, yep, that, that, I think maybe we will come to that when we review them. So when we have a discussion. Well, okay, yeah, that's a good point. We will actually, yeah. when we do the review, we'll probably have to make some changes. So. Yeah, because with some pull requests, we will be happy and we will merge them. For some, we will have suggestions and then we will see that we can make very small suggestions that we can do directly in the web. If we want a larger suggestion, we will show how to modify an existing pull request. So I think we will come back to that in a moment. So, um, okay, maybe I should take over. Yeah, so now we change roles. Uh, Jano is the reviewer and we will review a couple of pull requests together and we will learn what, what are the things that we look at. So what you're looking at now is the HackMD, but I will switch to the uh, GitHub page again and let's go to the main page so that we're all on the, uh, everybody knows where we are. So we're all at, on the same page. At this point, yep. should everyone stop their own things and watch you for a little bit? Yes, recommend? good point. So yeah, please, um, yeah, uh, at least uh, focus enough on the Twitch that you know what's going on. So yeah, yeah preferably stop what you're doing. Um, you can continue the exercise later. There is another um, exercise time coming up. Maybe now's a good time. Everyone stop and just breathe for 10 seconds. And yeah. then we go on. Okay, uh, I counted the ten. <laughs> um, okay, well, maybe I should just look at the pull requests first, and then I have a question to another one. So. Um, the list of pull requests is here. And now we have a good number of them because people have um, uh, people on the live stream have submitted some changes. So um, should I first review the tea recipe or the Git feature? These are both Radovan's pull requests. Um, the tea recipe That's later, good. because uh, there is some so first thinking there. Yeah. Okay. So you're sharing Git feature that you like. So uh, first I can look at the message to just to get the contact, um, what they're trying to do. You can refer to discussion or an issue here. Um, and then there's a big green button here that will merge the pull request, but I don't quite want to do that yet because I'm not sure what the changes are. So there's a list of commits here. Um, there's only one commit in this pull request. And I can, I could take a look at that directly. Um, maybe a clearer view though is this files changed. So this is, um, it's comparing the current, um, the main branch um, to this, uh, well, to rather ones a branch, so the pull request. And it's showing me all the changes. So what has happened here is a new file has been added. The green, a green means is something has been added and red means something has been removed. So what Radovan is saying um, 
well, he uh, uses this git commit dash v a lot and it's useful. So it's good to mention here. Right. So then, um, I think I agree with these changes. Um, before you maybe before you merge, uh, I can add here things that I look at. I, I often look at from which branch to which branch. Yeah. So here it goes from 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 other one. So on top to the blue. Ah, here. Highlight okay, it. Yeah. Into master from rather than a git trick. Yeah, this is particularly important in larger projects because you might have different branches and maybe the person didn't want to send it towards master but towards yeah. some other branch. So I look at that. I also look at, um, I mean, the first thing you see is the title, sharing a Git feature. It's good if it's descriptive. Yeah. Um, notice also that each pull request gets a number. Here, the, here is number 23. And you can refer to it. So then in discussions, you can re refer to that number and then things get cross-referenced. Cross yeah, so to mention it, I would, I can mention any other pull request here. So I can mention number um, 11, how to make tea. Yeah, and which and send that comment. Mm -hmm. And it's now cross-referenced from here. Yeah, and you can do maybe... some more, um, Fancy things with references, but yeah, this is the main main use here. And in in real life, what what other things are we often looking at when we review code? Um, well, of course, the first thing you look at is does it actually do or try to do the thing that um, that it's saying in the title and in the, in the description, um, and then if you can up, you can actually go to the branch and you know clone it, check out the code and test it, or there may be some tests so that you know that it works. Um, we'll talk about testing next week. Um, and then often in especially in bigger projects, it is very important to keep the code style similar um, between projects so that people can read the code, um, they're familiar with it and that also includes having the code in the right place. So if a function has to do with, um, well, I don't know, um, if this is a Git feature, this is not a recipe. So maybe they, it should not be in the same place as recipes. Um, maybe that's a comment that I should actually add to this pull request before merging. Um, but yeah, in general, that um, it sort of respects the structure of, of the software, of the code. Yeah, and if there is, the, if there could be a lot of fantastic new code coming in, but then one could also look, does it come with documentation? Is yeah. the documentation updated? Um, if, if you give massive amount of code, then one might also look, what is the license of this code that comes in? We will, we will talk about it next week. Oh yeah, I just wanted to click on conversation, but I can't because that's you. <laughs> okay. Um, so, oh, you wanted to go to conversation view? Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. yeah, and here in this conversation view, we can have a we can have actually a conversation. So if if Jano has questions about this, because maybe I didn't make clear what I what I wanted here, the context is not clear. We can we can have a conversation here. We can also involve more people, and we can involve people with by mentioning them. So by adding at GitHub username, then they get an email, they get notified, and then they can participate in this conversation. Mm, who do I know? Maybe Richard. Yeah. Should we, what is a good moment to, because you asked about how to make changes to a pull request. Of course, we could merge it now, and it would go to master. That's one way. Yeah. What if you, what if you want me to change something? OK, so um, yeah, I kind of want to make a small change. Um, so maybe I just want to capitalize this here. Um, so first thing, um, okay, I can start a review. Actually, this is not the right. This is where I finish my review. Sorry. But maybe ask me for a larger change because a small change. I want to. I want to ask it for in a different pull request. Uh, ask me okay, for something then... that I really need to do. Could you? create a folder called git stuff or similar. Let's see that. 
and um, I request changes. So I, you can just comment, that's fine. Um, doesn't really, well, I mean, that's just a comment. It doesn't change anything. Um, you can approve the changes, which will kind of just mark the pull request as um, I have approved it, and then maybe someone will merge it. Um, or I can request the changes, which is what I will do now. Okay, so now you cannot merge this anymore because I have requested changes and uh, Radovan has not answered uh, my request yet. All right, cool. So now uh, should I take the screen and make changes? That's probably best, yeah. Okay, screen reshared. Oh, let me find the pull request that we were just looking at. It was the git. It was this one. Huh? Where is it? Uh, number 23. Here. Okay, conversation. Jano makes this really good suggestion. How can I do that? One, make, one way to make changes to your pull request is to add new commits to the same branch. If I may, if I add new commits to the same branch and I push, the, push this branch, these new commits get added to this pull request. This is also the reason why we wanted you to always create a new branch before you make anything, because it would be confusing if all of this happened on master branch. Now I have a mechanism to suggest to apply changes to my pull request. So I will create a new commit. I will do what. Yano asked me for, I will create a, and this is now Linux, doesn't matter. Uh, I will create a folder called git stuff. And I will move this git trick into git stuff. Git status, git commit. Moving file into folder. And I need to push this change, git push origin to the same branch. I push this new commit to the same branch. And it appeared over here. Okay. <clears throat> and we can, now I can give the video back to Jano, who can then look at it again and review, and hopefully Jano is happy now. So let me take over the screen share again. Mm -hmm. Here we are. So my view is just slightly different. I see this um, new uh, changes since you last viewed. Um, and uh, maybe I'll click view changes. All oh, right, because it's a rename. So this is actually the change. Uh, it's been just renamed, moved to another place. Um, so let's just go to files changed. And this is sort of the full full changes of the current status of the pull request. So now it's not adding the git trick, but the git stuff slash git trick. And now I think it's fine. So if I remember right, because I now have requested changes, I think it's enough if I approve here. So I will add a comment, looks good. And I will approve this pull request. Okay. And now it can be merged again. So should I go ahead and merge it? Yeah, I mean, I'm biased here, but yes. So I have to click twice, confirm merge, and I can, so a merge always uh, creates a new commit. So I can actually add a, um, a commit message here. I will just keep it as it is. Okay. So now this pull request is closed um, and it has turned purple. Uh, and you, can, you can also yeah. navigate back to the repository. We will see that the okay, new so folder and the new file. Well. Yes, so let's look at the main page of the repository. Because now we will see our we'll see my new So code there is there. a git stuff folder here. And git trick has appeared here. 
Yeah. Now, should I bring my uh, my clone up to date? Maybe we can first merge a couple of more. OK, let's do a bit more review. So and have a look at uh, number 17. Wait a moment. Uh, yes, 17. Yeah, this one. 17. OK. So again, this is to master from Masao recipe. And there's one commit. And the really nice thing is that there is a typo, which yeah. I'm really grateful for, because then we can in haste, and there might be a typo. That's nice. So open it up. Yes. One typo that I saw was pepper on can tuna the pepper. Okay. Yeah. Yes, that is should have two P's. So yeah. And so here we can show how change. to how to suggest something directly here in GitHub. Because I could ask the submitter, well, can you please make another commit and fix the typo? But it could be a little bit annoying for very small changes. Yeah. And very small changes we can now suggest directly here. And yeah. well, let's do that. So yeah, so let's do that. So First, uh, if I just wanted to comment or if I want to do anything that refers to this specific line, um, instead of clicking here to comment, I will click here, this plus sign. And that adds a comment specifically about this line. Can you also comment no. on on entire line ranges? Uh, you can, but how do I do it? OK, yeah, I, exactly yeah. like that. I yeah. click here and then I pull down. Yes. And now I can comment on that. But I actually do want to comment on just, well, yeah, let's go back to salt and pepper. I think you I'll need just to comment looks good here. See what a comment looks like. It's pending because uh, I guess you always have to reply to a comment. Uh, but yeah, so this is the one we want to change this uh, pepper into pepper with two peas. So here I can add a suggestion. Suggestion so change. Icon with plus minus, tiny little icon with plus minus. Yeah. And we can add a suggestion directly here through the work. So this copied the line that I was looking at. Um, and now I can edit it. And should I add a comment? I guess this is clear enough mm -hmm. as it is. So just add review, comment. And now I have two things here. This is something I um, have forgotten quite lately. Um, so I have to actually go and click request changes and submit review. Otherwise, nobody will see this comments that I wrote. No, I don't, I'm not so sure. If you go back to discussion, you will see them. So um, I, I don't think you need to do this if you go to conversation. I do see them here. Yeah. I just uh, remember just last week, somebody did not see my changes because I had not clicked here. All right. Mm. But so I don't a, think this step is necessary. That's a difference between starting a review and making a single comment. So there's two buttons when making the comment. And yeah. OK. Thanks. And what is then the idea that then somebody else can actually commit your suggestion? Typically, yeah. it's the submitter. Yeah. Or somebody else. Yeah, so uh, okay. anyone who has access to that um, do the branch that the pull request is from can commit the suggestion, right? Um, mm. So I could click here and commit. Should I just do that, or no? We could let the good. we could let the submitter do this because the central they idea to be um, around still. They can yeah. And if not, I mean the idea was to to, to show that this is possible. So yeah. if somebody now clicks on this commit suggestion, it will create a new commit on that branch. And um, well, maybe let's see if somebody does that or we do it, because there will be another thing which would be nice to show. OK, I think it's done now. OK, thanks for that. Very good. Do you can just, Do I need to reload the page? To see yeah, reload the page is... to see that what happened. So let's scroll up a bit. Um, OK, right, so this has become outdated. Um, my comment here is I will just click Resolve here because yeah. um, this was just a comment. It was not really a suggestion. And now I guess I still need to go and approve. Yeah. So go to Files Changed, Review Changes, and Approve. Mm -hmm. 
And now before you merge, don't merge too quickly because I wanted to show one thing. Okay. That uh, next to the merge pull request button, there is this little arrow where you can. Yeah. Now that we have, we have two commits. We have this commit and then little typo fix. And we could imagine what if you have 50 commits here. We have the option to squash and merge. Yes. So we have the option to squash all the commits into one, and then on master, they will appear as it will be one commit only. We don't have to do it. I, I, I just wanted to know, everybody know that this is an option, possibility. Yeah. So we can or, or the create merge commit or squash and merge. So, well, should we just see what it looks like? Yeah, let's, let's see how it looks like. Squash and merge. So now this um, lets me modify, um, I mean, yeah, this is again creating a new commit, but because now it's actually squashing together multiple commits, it gives me a longer um, commit message. I guess this is a commit message, yeah, um, that I can edit here. So I will just leave it as it is. Okay, and this is also closed now. So, Sounds really good. Scroll up. so once I uh, merge a pull request, it's not no longer immediately visible in this pull request list. Um, yeah. You can look at closed pull requests here um, if you're interested. Yeah. Okay. And we will now not go through all the pull requests, but I wanted to maybe review two more because we will okay. see something interesting. Yeah, um, so I just wanted to show quickly that there is this file now here, it's been added. So another one that you can um, review and merge is uh, 11, number 11. Um, and thanks for everybody who submitted. So we will review them. We, we just don't want to make it not too long, but the number 11, it's a recipe for tea. Yeah. And Again, it's, uh, master from Arisari branch to master. That looks good. Um, and let's look at the files. So yeah, it looks like a working tea recipe. Yeah, this will create tea. So uh, I guess I'm fine with this. Um, we we have not um, we are allowing merge without any approvals. So I don't actually need to go and approve this one. Yeah, I didn't want it's to make it complicated. I... So the the approval is not not required. Um, yeah, maybe go there and then yeah. so let's merge it. Yeah. So just confirm merge. There we go, and done. Yeah, and now you can go back to another pull request. Uh, here, okay. And there is and now, the 21. Yeah, this is and your we will hopefully, hopefully see something interesting because, let's see what happens. Oh yeah, look, 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 look at the warning there. Yeah, so this branch has conflicts, it must be resolved. So Radovan has created a file called how to make tea. And now that we have merged the other one, uh, there is already a file called how to make tea. So we had two, two pull requests about making tea and they are conflicting. So. Um, and now what you, one, one thing you could do, do? On GitHub? You, could, you could now ask me here, well, so the other one, you came, your pull request came my second and can you please fix the conflict? That's one way. But uh, we can also show that it is possible to look at conflicts and resolve there conflicts. There is a resolve conflicts the button here. Mm -hmm. So I could, yeah, I can ask Radovan to, to fix it. Um, but since there are two suggestions on how to make tea, then maybe I want it to be a third party to uh, resolve the conflict. Usually though, it would be the pe person who actually wrote the second pull request who uh, knows how to do it. So, well, in any case. So this looks pretty much the same as um, what you would see if you um, if you started a merge and had a conflict in just in your local repository. Um, so it would add these three lines, and then you would just have to pick which one uh, to use. I'm not sure which one of this is better. Maybe. Um, the second one is better, but yeah. just for the effect, it's good if we take the second one, with, but maybe. So uh, yeah, not take it completely as it is, but. Yeah, um, let's, let's take a compromise here. Yeah. So I will actually do a, a compromise where we don't add three tea bags. 
but we only add one. Uh, that's from relevant suggestion. So mm -hmm. let me uh, copy this part and put it here. Now I actually have to do the numbering correctly. Yeah, and, and let's remove the resolution markers. Else. And at the end, let's remove these and these lines, also the line okay. seven. And remove then at the seven. end, yep, like this. Yeah. I usually like to have an empty line at the end. Wow. Um, mm. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. All right. So there is, um, it's resolved now. Um, maybe I'll add a uh, comma there as I go. And mark it as resolved. Okay. And now the this is now a merge commit. So this is actually pulling the master branch into this uh, rather than T branch. And there is a new commit here. Now we can look at the changes. It would probably be a good practice, um, a good habit to ask Radovan for comment at this point. Or I could also just directly merge it. Yeah, but fortunately I'm here on, on video and I can yeah. just say that, oh, thanks a lot for, for doing that. Yeah, please merge. Okay, so again, we have a close pull request. Now, yeah, I guess we will not do all of them. Um, but we also... can invite uh, people who are part, part of this repository. You have write permissions. Yeah. You can now review the remaining pull requests and, uh, and merge them. We should do at least one thing before we take a break. And that would be that now that we merge a couple of these pull requests and we have them on on the master branch, yes, they are on GitHub, but maybe you would like to update yeah. your local clone as well. So when I started this repository, I, um, of course, uh, oh, oh, I mean, when I cloned this repository, these changes, of course, went out there. So if I look at my copy of the repository, um, yeah, there's only my recipe. Okay, in fact, let's check that we're on the right branch. No, we are not. We are not on the master branch. So let's check out master. Okay. New branch is up to date with origin master. That is in fact, uh, well, it's up to date with my origin master here, but it's that's um, kind of a misleading message in that it's not up to date with GitHub. So let's, um, well, let's just do LS again, list the files again, just to make sure, yeah, it's not up to date. So um, before I start making any new changes, I do need to make sure that I have all the changes from this, uh, uh, from GitHub, from the, uh, the central repository. And to do that, I type git pull origin and um, let's be explicit and pull from the master branch. Okay, and we get some changes. There's uh, quite a few new files. And let's do ls again to see uh, clearly what's there. So we have a few more recipes and then we have this git stuff folder. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So pull did the opposite of push. And yeah. pull, there is always a merge hidden in the pool and it, it will modify your current branch. So the pool will merge whatever you want to. So origin master into your current branch, which, which was master. Yeah. If we have time, I can show one more thing. And that was a draft pull request. I can open it up and then we could take a break. But of course, maybe um, there are other questions. And then we go to the distributed yes. version control. Yeah, okay. Should I pick screen and show something which I think is really useful to know about? Yeah, uh, go ahead. All right, here I have, in the meantime, now created a new branch with with an idea and it's something unfinished it might still be good for me to i want to still push this branch to origin so that other people can look at it i will do that and now on on github pull requests i can open up a new pull request this is not something i want to be merged to master because it's unfinished 
it's unfinished work, but I would like to have feedback. So what did I do here? This is, imagine that this is a few weeks of work, but it's really not finished. But one way to collect feedback to this is to open a draft pull request. Draft pull request. This way, it cannot be merged. It can only be merged after this is marked ready for review. But already now, people can look at it. They can give me comments, suggestions, and I have a way of improving things. So this can be a nice mechanism to, to collect feedback on something that is in progress. Uh, the, the other uh, way of getting feedback on your idea before doing a lot of, lot of work is that to first open an issue. In the issue, the issues don't only have to be for problems. They can also be for describing an idea. Here I have a suggestion, a proposal. Here is my idea. And here you can describe what you plan to do. And then people can comment and they can give me hints. Maybe what I plan to do has been already done. Maybe there is a library for this. And here I can collect ideas. And then I can go and do five weeks of programming. And when I come back with a pull request, in the pull request, I can then cross-reference this issue. And then the, the person who will review it will know what is the context of this and can have a look at this proposal. Aha, people have agreed to this. Good idea. This is what I wanted to show. Yeah. Yeah, that's good to know. Um, and yeah, I mean, mostly if, when you are even planning to work on someone else's project, it is a good idea to add an issue before you start writing code, um, just to get their ideas and um, see if they're actually interested in um, in taking the project in the direction that, that you're thinking of. Sounds perfect. Should we take a break? Yeah, we should. Yeah. So until, I suggest until 11 minutes past the hour. Okay. Yes. So, and should we really especially recommend people to take the break this time? So we've done a whole lot of stuff you should get up, walk around, and, well, come back refreshed. Does that sound good? Sounds good. Let's. Sounds good. Okay. Break until 11 past the hour. See you then. Bye. Hey. Um, so we are back. And um, I hope you actually had a good break and did some, uh, took some time to walk around. Now we thought um, we, it would be good to have some time um, to continue to finish up with the exercise and, um, and also do some code review. So there's um, the exercise two is merging a pull request. Um, it would be also good to practice reviewing the code. Um, so try to find something to fix and suggest a fix and see what happens. Now, um, if things go wrong, don't panic though. Um, this is kind of, um, you're doing it, uh, doing it for the first time and usually you would have someone, uh, someone else working in the group that knows what's going on. I mean, this, um, and yeah, we will help you. Um, and then there are these optional exercises, um, can you show or can Actually, you show on screen? Or maybe I'm, I'm sharing. Screen. Yeah, you are uh, sharing the screen. I just realized. That was, so right, I yeah, can we show, have these optional exercises. It um, it's in. So you can try this. I have shown. I have created a conflicting pull request, so we have seen that. But yeah. what you can try is open a pull request and try to practice how to make changes to a pull request, to an existing pull request already. Yeah. There is also an optional exercise further down. Scrolling, sorry for that. Even further down. No, it's not. Where is it? Um, oh, because I'm in the wrong exercise. lesson. Oh, I'm in the wrong episode. <laughs> okay, okay, sorry. Yeah. Okay, back um, to delete what I said. Cut, cut. Oh, uh, what I wanted to say is, oh, there is one down here 
which is cent called centralized three. This one, here it is. Yeah, cross-referencing issues, right? Mm -hmm. And open, open an uh, issue, describe what you want to do, and in the commit message, and if you forget in the commit message, you can also do it in the pull request. You can cross-reference the issue number with some special keywords. And you will see that GitHub understands these and can automatically close the issue once this, co or this commit or pull request is merged. Now, um, doing this means you also will create a new branch, create a pull, uh, commit to it, create a pull request from it, and and then handle uh, work with the pull request, uh, which is a great thing because repetition actually is the key to learning. So, um, yeah, I'm just I'm saying the reason I'm saying this is because someone might be thinking that we're doing the same thing again, and partly it is, um, and that is a good thing. How much time do we give people for this? Ten minutes, fifteen. Yeah, I think. Um, both how is much fine. time do we need for the next part? Then? We will have enough yeah. uh, time for the next. Because we still have one hour left. There's enough to do with the optional exercises for 15 minutes, um, even if everyone is already done. Yeah. yeah. And then we would restart here half past the hour with, then we would move to the next episode, which is then forking workflow distribute with version control. Yeah. Okay, so um, exercise time until. 12.30. Yeah, goal is optional exercise, code review, and also updating your, your local clone. Yeah. OK, I will take us off. See you later. And we're back. So now we're going to the next section, distributed. So okay. it will be quite similar to what we've been doing already, with the main key difference that you don't have to request permission to do something before you do it. So this is basically the way that you would request, or the way you would contribute to projects that you aren't already involved in. Uh, yes. Okay, so I'll hand it over to Yarno's screen. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, the big hassle in the previous uh, way of doing uh, working together was that everybody needed access to the repository. And um, well, in the sort of big world of open source, um, you will often or you um, yeah, you will often want to contribute to something or modify something that um, a group that you're just not related to in any way um, has created. So maybe you want to, um, I mentioned NumPy earlier, or maybe you just want to pull the Linux kernel, uh, whatever, make some changes and even have them uh, merge the changes back into the, uh, the domain uh, project. So this is the way you do that. And it is a workflow that um, you can use um, in a research project. Other, I mean, even if it's not as big as uh, NumPy um, or something like that, uh, if it's not a huge open source project, uh, it's still very useful because researchers from other universities can just take your code, contribute to it, and they don't need to um, go through this whole permission thing. Um, and you don't need to give them permission to directly push to your repository. Can I so, add here that, yeah. I mean, adding contributors to a project is, I don't think it's a hassle. It, it was a hassle here because we were doing it at the last minute yeah, and okay. lots of people and and we everybody had like five minutes to do it. But for most research groups, this is really fine. And it really just takes a few minutes. Um, yeah, okay. Maybe I'm emphasizing a bit, this a bit too much. Um, yeah, but I, I think it's a good point because uh, the reason why we now take it to the next level and we will add a little bit of complexity here is that in in some projects it's almost impossible to be added as a contributor because they don't know you. 
and now you can still make changes for yourself or you can contribute them so it's a it's a really nice mechanism but it's not a, um and and as also as you suggested the open as you said the open source community really thrives on this model that anybody can suggest changes to any public project so i guess the key point really is that they don't you don't need to know the person making the changes and you can make changes to even if you don't know the people who own the repository um so there's no trust required really um you suggest the changes they review it and accept if they want to and it can be a way to build trust it can be a way yeah. to form new collaborations yeah so um let's go into the details a bit so I'm scrolling down to this image, forking layout. Um, so the essential difference between this and the central repository uh, thing uh, layout that we just talked about um, is that when we start, we make a fork, uh, which is a copy of the original repository, because we don't have access. Uh, we cannot directly make changes in the original repository. Um, so when we, we create a new one, uh, we create a copy called a fork in our own namespace, in our, under our own uh, GitHub username or GitLab username, and then we can make changes. And otherwise, it's basically the same. So we make some changes, and we can create a pull request from those changes. Um, and put the pull request then points to the original repository. So um, there is a little bit more complication here, because now there's two repositories on GitHub. So there's uh, two remote repositories and um, you still have one uh, on your system. So it's kind of, you have to keep track of uh, what is going on in both repositories in a sense. And we will then, then you will push to your fork, not to the, not to what we call the central repository. And yeah. it's also good to point out that from like perspective of, uh, of a single person, now I'm dealing with three repositories. One is on my computer, the blue box, one is the red box, and one is the green box. And I realized that these are maybe not good color choices. We should change that. Uh, now I have to deal with three repositories, and they can all live their own lives. I mean, they can develop independently, and they don't synchronize automatically. So I want to reemphasize that these they don't synchronize automatically. We actively will update the fork, we actively send a pull request, we actively pull and push changes. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, I've essentially, I, I think I already mentioned all of these features. So anybody can contribute without asking permission. A maintainer still have full control of what, ha what happens. So they decide what gets merged and what doesn't. And well, there is now two remotes for you to work with your own and the central one. Okay. So there's a second example I mentioned NumPy um, and JupyterLab and well, oh, I mean, almost any open source project really that you can think of will use this uh, workflow. Okay. So uh, yeah, uh, I talked about multiple remotes and another concept worth mentioning. So uh, we, already used this origin and um, well, there's nothing especially special about the word origin, but that gets created when we clone a repository. So now we need to do some, um, do some um, extra steps to work with the other remote as well. And that is usually called upstream. So you remember this git remote add command. Um, now I'm thinking I should probably be demonstrating at this point and not just showing commands on the screen. Um, but you remember the uh, git remote add command, you can add a new repository um, as a remote repository. This is something we we did it in passing yesterday, actually, because yeah. we followed when we shared our repository on GitHub, then GitHub gave us some hints on how to do that. And one of the lines was git remote add origin, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I, I think we don't have to demonstrate this at this moment, but uh, we can, at this at, at this point, it's good to know that you can define as many remotes as you like, yeah. and you can call them any way you like. They don't have to be yeah. called origin, 
there's nothing really special about the name origin. It's again, a, uh, it's a convention and you can also rename them. So here's an example of how you might want to name if you want to work with multiple remotes. Um, okay, um, so let's go, let's move forward. Um, so the next part will actually already be the essentially the workflow um, as an exercise. And what I do want to show you before that is how to create the fork. Uh, because the rest of the workflow is essentially the same as we already did. Um, just that there is a fork is the new thing. So and now we want to be, um, we were a little bit confusing in the earlier exercise. Now we want to say clearly that the best thing now is not to anything, watch what Jana will do. We will yeah. only point out the, the tricky parts. We will not go through the whole exercise yeah. beforehand. And then you will have enough time to catch up both the exercise leads and, and the learners. So now please watch, watch us do. So the learners don't do anything now. The exercise leads don't do anything now. And um, for the people on the stream and for me, um, Radovan has already created these repositories. Um, so there is a forking workflow exercise recorded, uh, which will be visible on the stream. And there is also a forking workflow exercise without the word recorded um, that is not visible, uh, that we will not show on the stream, uh, if you would prefer to use that one. And so, the other exercise, all the other exercise repositories, they will be created during the exercise. You will yeah. have enough time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you don't need to do anything here. So previously I cloned um, just the original repository, but now I don't have, I cannot push to this. I cannot create a branch here um, and push to this repository because um, it's not my repository. So what I will do is create a fork. And I do that by pressing this button here. So we did the unwatch thing, um, and this is right next to it. Okay, let's press that. Um, it might give you a bunch of options if you are in some uh, teams on uh, GitHub. I will just choose my, this is my username. So I will choose that one because that's uh, kind of just my own. And this is what we recommend everybody to do. So yeah. everybody to choose your own username there, if you get that question. Yeah. And then it works for a while, and it kind of looks like I'm on in the original repository, but actually it's under my username now. So maybe I should just to clarify, go back um, in my history and look at this. Oops, um, I went too far back. So this is the uh, original repository under code refinery workshop exercises. And I have created a fork. And now if I go into the, um, so one way to find your fork, if you have one, is again to click this button. But now since you already have one, um, it will suggest uh, going there using this link. And now I can see my username here. So this is a different repository. And now, since it is under my username, I can make changes to it. So I can clone from here. I can make changes, make a new branch, make changes, and push here. And then I can also use um, that new branch to create a pull request. And that essentially is the exercise. So um, yes, and um, anything else to note? Yeah, I just want to repeat that really important point: is that before you clone, verify on top left that you are cloning yeah. your repository. Yeah, make sure to clone this one. You can also see, you can see that GitHub remembers where it is forked from. So it says a little bit smaller font. It says where it is yeah. forked from. Yeah. Uh, the other note is right in this exercise, you don't need to send your exercise lead or GitHub username. The exercise lead doesn't have to add anybody as contributor because that's exactly the point of this exercise. Mm -hmm. So here there is less to do. Yeah. Nobody needs to be here at it because the whole point is that we practice I'm making changes to to a public repository of somebody else. Okay, so um, should we move on to the exercise? So the first, what will happen in the exercise is first the exercise lead, if you are in a group, will create a repository, and then you will 
clone to repository like I just did. And then, uh, sorry, start over. So first the exercise lead will um, create the repository if you're in a group. If you're not in a group, then uh, the repository exists already. Um, and then you will fork, not clone, fork the repository. So use this fork button um, to create a new one under your own username. Then you can clone or you will clone that, uh, make some changes and create a pull request like in the previous exercise. So in the, um, so I will actually just go all the way up to show again where I am. So I'm in the distributed version control and forking workflow part and scrolling down exercise one. So you have a, a very um, clear, uh, relatively detailed description of what the exercise is. So just follow those steps and everything should go okay. And um, the goal is to arrive at step A, <coughs> A to E. We will again review, we will get a couple of pull requests. We will review them together. We will now look at, there will be some new features popping up. So we will look at these new features. Also maybe helpful if you go back to the exercise repository. We are still in the cooking context. So this one. Um, now if you zoom in, we'll just a little bit want to show the, the files. There are now a couple of files. Mm, view code. So view code, okay. Yeah, there are a couple of files. There is a readme, there is a .gitignore. We remember maybe that from, from first day. There is some other stuff, GitHub workflows. We will explain what it is. Here we want to collaboratively create a cookbook for taco recipes. If you are not into tacos and maybe it's not inclusive enough, it doesn't have to be a taco. It can be any other recipe. Your goal will be to create a new file. You don't have to modify any of these existing files. There is also this test.py. We will clarify that. So your goal will be to create a new file with a different taco recipe or a completely different recipe and send it as a pull request. And then at the end of the exercise, we will collect, we will collaboratively have developed a cookbook for, for the next taco party. Um, so how much time should we give? And do we take a break after the exercise time? Yes, that sounds so yes to the second question. And so one thing we can do is 45. I would say it will be a little bit easier because things are already familiar. I would say 15 minutes for the exercise, followed by a break. Okay. And then we would return from the break 10 past the hour, review, discuss, and summarize, and discuss how we can we then contribute changes to other people's project. What have we learned? So that's my suggestion. I don't know if you think that's a, that's a good idea. Sounds good. Okay, sounds good. And do people do everything on the distributed page or up to which step? The distributed uh, one. So up to step E. Um, so this is exercise part one. Okay, great. So Okay. In the stream, we will come back um, and start talking after how many? 10 minutes. If you're in a group, feel free of, well, if you're in a group, you probably oh. do want to mute us. And even if, um, if you're not, if you're not interested okay. in listening and you want to do the exercise yourself, then feel free to mute us. Yeah, there are optional exercises also. It's okay to do the whole page, but we will together do everything up to step E here on stream. Okay, see All you right. then. Bye. Okay, um, hi again. So we'll start walking through the exercise. Um, but yeah, if, if you are working uh, on it and don't want us to bother you, just mute yourself. And we'll be back after the break at 12 past. Uh, please do start the break at two past. Uh, so that you have time to actually take a break. All right, so
um, I will start with the first part. So I already actually showed how to create the fork mm -hmm. and I already have the fork. So moving on to cloning. Yeah. So I checked that I'm on the correct uh, repository and I am, so this is my username. Looking good. So um, copy the path again or the URL again and git clone paste the URL. And now I will give it the name forking workflow exercise. And there we go. So we get some changes there. And now, now before moving yes. on, I think the exercise says that before we start coding, we open an issue where we describe what we plan to do. Okay, good point. I should actually follow the exercise while I'm doing this. So no, um, I can tell this, you. Yeah. Okay, well, that also works. So let's create an issue. So um, I don't want to create an issue in my uh, fork. In, in fact, issues are not enabled here. Um, I want to create the issue in the uh, main repository. Yeah, that makes sense because then there is one place where all the issue tracking happens. Yeah. It's less confusing for the whole project. So there's already seven issues here. People have been doing the exercise. I will just create one new one. Um, now I have to be creative. Okay. Um, what about my recipe? I'm not being very creative. I want to add one. Okay. So my issue is now number 11 and I can use this number to refer to this issue. Okay. The next step is to start writing the changes, right? Yeah, I will just comment on your idea and give you some hints. Okay. Comments. Okay, there we go. Okay, so it says, please go ahead. So I will go ahead. You could even self assign to, to signal to everybody that you're actually working on it. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so now uh, everyone should know that I'm working on this. Um, so they don't need to start working on it instead of me. Let's go to uh, CD forking workflow exercise. That's where I cloned the repository. Okay. Um, so LS will tell me what files are already there. And now I probably, I want to do git remote um, dash V or dash dash verbose to see what the remote origin is actually uh, now. So it is referring to my fork of the repository, which is good. Um, so I did everything the way I was supposed to do. So I'll just leave that as it is um, and start a new branch. So git checkout dash B um, to create a new branch and go into it in one go. The new branch is called my recipe. Um, I could add my username here, but because the whole thing is under my namespace uh, under my uh, username, mm -hmm. um, it's not that necessary. Okay, uh, and now git status to check. So I'm in my recipe branch and ls just to check what files are there. So I will create a file called um, yonostarkos.md. I don't expect that the main repository or any of the pull requests will contain that one. Um, I don't really know anything about this. Some tomatoes, I guess, and cheese. Okay. No chili? Sorry? No chilies? No chilies. Um, okay. I, I did not add any chilies, sorry. Okay, that's just my recipe. <laughs> um, so I'm saving the file and then I need to add it to git. Git add Yarnos tacos and commit. Yes, and now comes the interesting part because in the commit message we don't we want to refer to the issue and the issue was number. Oh yeah, I can do that in the commit message as well. Yeah. Oh, I, I was thinking of doing it in a comment in the pull request. We can do both. Yeah. So this is about issue and then number 11. Yeah, but we want to also 
use one of these magic words. So closes okay. or fixes. So, so that... I'll share the screen. So is there, oh no, this was in the pre, we already talked, uh, or rather in the material, um, yeah. it was in the optional exercise. So it's somewhere down there, but words, it's yeah. closes or fixes. Yeah. So just before the hash 11, I would, instead of this is about issue 11, I would yeah. say this closes. This closes. Yeah. Issue 11. This okay. will work. All right, so that is the commit, and now I need to push it to my repository. Now, this is what I always do. Um, this will not work, uh, but it will tell me what to do. So um, it reminds me that you need to run this set upstream. So I copy it from there, and um, my recipe. it might as well be just my recipe. It's uh, yeah. I'm going we to have just like start soon. 30 seconds left before the break, but no stress. Okay, so let's push. And it's here. Now, okay, so I have, I'm looking at the issue. I need to go to code. And now I see my pull request here. Oh, rather my uh, branch here. So create a pull request. Mm -hmm. And it took... Uh, and now it looks the same. Comment there. Sorry? Oh, yeah. Sorry, didn't want to interrupt. So it just took the last, uh, it took the commit message as the, as the name for the pull request and that's fine for me. So let's create the pull request. Maybe I should just scroll down to see. Yeah, it looks good. So create the pull request. Okay. Anything else we want to do before the break? No, I think we, we are now in break time. We will okay. be back 12 past and then look at this together. Okay, so we go to break. See you back shortly. Right. Bye. Hello, and we are back. And we have uh, a little bit over 15 minutes left. There will not be any exercise session anymore, but we can now together uh, do the remaining steps and discuss some things that were new in this exercise compared to the previous exercise. And I will discuss these new features by looking at the at the live stream exercise repository. A couple of issues were opened and we got a couple of pull requests. And the idea here was that before doing the work, we invited contributors to first describe what they want to do so that they can collect feedback and also inform others that they are working on it. Let me have a look at these pull requests and zoom in a little bit. A couple of things are new here. First thing you might have noticed. Mm. What do we notice? What's a new thing? There we, are some tick marks and crosses. Yeah. So we have these red crosses, green checks. This is this is now a new thing that we added, a little bit in passing. It's not about conflicts. This is nothing to do with conflicts. We have added automated testing. We will talk more about automated testing next week, how to do it. Right now, I only want to show that it can be done. You can set up an automated test, which will inform me as a reviewer whether this passed or failed. So here it failed, here it passed. And it will help me with the code review. The test that we have created is a really silly test because we check whether the recipe contains the word taco. But the test is silly. And how this works and how you can set up your own tests, we will really do in depth next week. In this case, we tested on three different Python versions on Ubuntu, and we could test also on Windows and on, on Mac OS. And it doesn't have to be Python, it could be any other code. The, the other thing that is new is that pull requests are, they are still from branch to branch, but they come now from a different repository. So this, is, this comes from this branch and this repository towards the exercise repository towards master. Everything else is, looks the same and feels the same. People have been also asking on HackMD 
about issues. They wanted to open an issue and couldn't find this in their own forks. And this is this is because by default, issue tracking is disabled in a fork. And, and typically this makes sense because we want to have one place where we track all the issues. Um, yes. Any comment? Um, well, yeah, okay. So yeah, so we just want, we want to have one place for all the issues. We also want the owners of the original of the um, well of the main repository to notice the issues mm -hmm. and they will probably not look at our fork of the repository. Yeah. If you really want to, you can enable issues in a fork, but typically we just want to have one place. Yeah. Because Same goes for pull requests. So there mm -hmm. are no there is no pull requests tab in the fork either. Mm -hmm. That also makes sense. Yes, there is another thing that is new here, and that is maybe I will open up. Maybe let's start with this one here. This is actually not about Otako, but it's about because this contributor noticed that we had a, we had a mistake in the in the readme. So this, okay, there is also a recipe, <clears throat> but there is also a fix in for the readme. Whether it was a good idea to put two different changes into the sample requests is another discussion, but it's these are both really good changes that we really appreciate. So this is good. I would like to have that merged. What is interesting here is that um, you can cross-reference an issue in a commit message. You can also do it in the in the pull request title. And that's nice because now when I review it, I can browse it and I can go in there. If I click, it will take me to the to the issue. And I will do that in my I will I will do something here, hopefully not too confusing. I will open up the issue. Which one is it? It's the issue number two. Yeah. So both of them are cross-referenced. In the issue, I can see that this refers to the commit. The commit refers to the issue. And the, the really funny thing is that if I now, or let me thank, thank you. It's always nice to give a bit of human touch. Or uh, if I now merge this, have a look, look at this green open, what, what will happen to it if I click on the button? it will automatically close the issue. Be why was that? Because there is this magic word. So there are a couple of magic words like close, closes, fix, fixes, and GitHub understands this. And what is so good about this is not that I saved two seconds moving the mouse pointer down and closing it. The good thing was that it gives issues a really well-defined lifetime. And if I later, Maybe maybe I hit the same issue on my computer or in a different project, and I read about it. I can find out from from when until when did it exist, which commit fixed it. Do I have this commit in my branch? Yes or no? I can find out. So it's really good to do to do this cross referencing. So I can close this again. What else should we point out? Um. Well, there are my uh, pull requests, which break, uh, well, not break, but I mean, they, um, well, they, I guess the word is break. They break the tests. The test, yeah. tests don't work for my pull requests. This one. And if I want to know why they, why they fail, I could go into details. Not sure I want to go there now. I could click here because we will talk more about testing next week. Yeah. So this would be another mechanism. I mean, the test here was silly, but this would be another way of asking Yano to maybe make some changes and restore it. Mm. But it can it can help making sure that 
So the test can help us to make sure that we preserve whatever we define as the working code, working project. Um, okay, there's one more thing that we should do before we end. Oh yeah, right, right, right. Or two things, but um... yeah, I should merge more. Yeah, right. Good point. Let me merge some more because I know what you want to show. So this is also pretty cool recipe using the force. Let's merge that. Thanks a lot, and let's do. Maybe this one here. And sorry for being so selective here due to due to time. We like this one. Let's get that in. Okay. And now the uh, what we want to show now is that a couple of recipes are here in in our central repository. But if if I would go to to Janos Fork. Where are you? Here are you. Okay. You don't have them because they didn't autom automatically synchronize. So maybe you can take the screen and yeah, you can now update I, your fork. I'm taking over the screen. There we are. So yeah, what you see here is, um, well, not my fork actually, but the um, original repository. Uh, so I will go to my fork and uh, it's missing the new recipes. It's in fact telling me here it's seven commits behind the original repository. So um, it's actually much easier these days in GitHub to um, get these changes. What I will do is click this fetch upstream. Um, so I will click fetch and merge. I could also first compare and see what the changes are. But I trust that the master branch is in good condition. And yeah, there will be no conflicts. And there were no conflicts. So good. Um, so now I have all the new recipes here. The other thing is, um, if I go to my terminal here, um, git status will tell me what branch I'm on. I'm on my, my new recipe branch. So let's check out the master branch. And I do not have the new recipes here either. So since I have uh, since my uh, fork is now up to date, I can pull from origin, but I don't actually need to type origin. It's set up, so I can just type git pull and I will get the new changes. Okay, so here are the new recipes. Okay, so that's just, they, they are separate repositories. We do need to do a couple of clicks and uh, commands to make sure that they're up to date with the um, with the main project, right? And now that I'm up to date, I could start working on a new feature. Mm -hmm. The other thing, um, since I mentioned two things, the other thing is just to wrap up. So what are the key points here? What's the main, main thing about this workflow? Uh, it's really good to take the step back and um, show the big picture. The big picture of all of this is is learning, collaborative learning. Oh, we showed you a couple of technical things, and and then we said that well, we want to look at how the commit messages look, are the tests, is there new documentation? But it's not really about it's not only about quality. For me, the main thing is that it's super cool learning because two people know about the change. Or both the submitter and the reviewer learn from each other. I learn a lot from people reviewing my changes. It can it can be great learning to even look at look at your favorite project that you are using, your favorite library, and look at how how do how do people discuss in pull requests and merge requests? How do they send changes? How do they ask for review? What is the process? You will learn not only about code review, but you will also learn about programming because then you can step out of your bubble. You can see how do other people program? How oh, they use this interesting function that I never heard of? Oh, there is this library that I never heard of. It's really wonderful learning. We can also maybe go to the lesson material and point out that we have this extra episode, which we don't have to go through because many things we have mentioned uh, during stream. Bit to, uh, yeah. We have this how to contribute changes 
to somebody else's project. And it's a summary. It summarizes um, many things that are here we have mentioned. Uh, and if I would pick one, one thing out of this is that for if it's a trivial change, it, it's a typo fix, send a pull request. If it's anything more than trivial, it can be a good idea to open an issue and discuss it, at least inform others that you plan to do it. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to say is that, which might have got lost, that we, we have used today a lot GitHub, but there is also GitLab and Bitbucket, and everything that we show today exists also on GitLab. It has sometimes a different name. So GitLab mm -hmm. calls, calls it merge request. GitHub calls it pull request. But all of it works there similarly. Everything you can do there as well. It's a slightly different language, but uh, it's it is doing the same things. Um, yeah, I think um, yeah, I guess uh, so. This is we showed a lot of things of uh, we we showed how um, technically to to um, contribute to projects, um, and of course these are collaborative projects, so. It is important that maybe even the main thing um, to actually have discussions with people and work work together on um, and talk together about the, uh, the direction of the project and um, uh, yeah before you start working or be, before you spend a huge amount of time on working on your own in a uh, towards one particular feature. And maybe there is an easier way to do it. Maybe it's already there, but um, in some different form. Or maybe it's something that you need, but nobody else needs, and then you write it for yourself. What is a good way to contribute to other people's project if you are new to programming? Um, one, one way to, to contribute is that you start contributing to documentation. Yeah. Or you go through the tutorial and you see that tutorial can be better, you contribute to the tutorial. Or you find out there is no tutorial. Um, then th that can be a good first contribution. Maybe your first walk through through this program, through this library, and you can contribute tutorial. I think the, the maintainers will be very happy about that. That can be a good first step. Tutorial documentation, and later you can also have new features and suggestions. And um, many projects also need help with translations. If you're listening to this in English, but you're not an English speaker, you already know two languages. So um, you can definitely help with translating the documentation. Um, and you know that way, allowing more people to use the project. Yeah. And we have two minutes left. And also thanks a lot for already submitting our feedback. Well, today there is quite a bit more negative feedback and positive feedback, we really appreciate. Uh, one thing that stands out is that it seems that time for exercises was way too little. So we need to readjust. We have been, it was the first time that we tried to accommodate, make everybody happy. And it seems that that was really confusing and we need to streamline. Make clear what happens before exercise, make clear what happens during, give more time and unconfuse. So uh, many lessons learned for us. But hopefully there was also some good parts there. Um, we, there will be some things we did here on stream during the exercise break. Uh, this, you can find that in the recording. It might be worthwhile to rewatch some. Our exercise steps, they are very detailed and very explicit, but I understand that it's impossible to re even read it during the 15, 20 minute exercise, but might be worthwhile to go through these Again, on your own, team up with others, involve us, write us, ask us for code review, we will help out. Any final comments from others here? It was quite a learning experience doing this. This is the first time we've done 
this lesson, which is so widely distributed and collaborative yeah. in the live stream style. Yeah, I mean, and it wasn't perfect, clearly, but I'm actually kind of surprised at how well it worked. Yes, we, we did get yeah. um, successful uh, pull requests and issues in our in the visible repository. And I assume also in the other one. Yeah, it was difficult to watch all these things. We will catch up with everything that we missed out. Yeah. And yeah, next time we know better. Yeah. So next week when we begin again, so we're sort of changing topics. So it's not directly these Git related things, but we go to more things about using programming. So having the content environment installed is very important. So we still do use Git, but it's more Git is used to do other things. So it's more practice. It's like sort of practice using Git while also learning something else. So if you feel very confused today, don't worry. Next week starts again on another track and it's easy to join there. Hello, and we are back. And we have uh, a little bit over 15 minutes left. There will not be any exercise session anymore, but we can now together uh, do the remaining steps and discuss some things that were new in this exercise compared to the previous exercise. And I will discuss these new features by looking at the at the live stream exercise repository. A couple of issues were opened and we got a couple of pull requests. And the idea here was that before doing the work, we invited contributors to first describe what they want to do so that they can collect feedback and also inform others that they are working on it. Let me have a look at these pull requests and zoom in a little bit. A couple of things are new here. First thing you might have noticed, mm -hmm. what do we notice? What's a new thing? There we... are some tick marks and crosses. Yeah. So we have these red crosses, green checks. This is, this is now a new thing that we added, a little bit in passing. It's not about conflicts. This is nothing to do with conflicts. We have added automated testing. We will talk more about automated testing next week, how to do it. Right now, I only want to show that it can be done. You can set up an automated test, which will inform me as a reviewer whether this passed or failed. So here it failed, here it passed. And it will help me with the code review. The test that we have created is a really silly test because we check whether the recipe contains the word taco. But the test is silly. And how this works and how you can set up your own tests, we will really do in depth next week. In this case, we tested on three different Python versions on Ubuntu, and we could test also on Windows and on, on Mac OS. And it doesn't have to be Python, it could be any other code. The, the other thing that is new is that pull requests are they are still from branch to branch, but they come now from a different repository. So this is this comes from this branch and this repository towards the exercise repository towards master. Everything else is looks the same and feels the same. People have been also asking on HackMD about issues. They wanted to open an issue and couldn't find this in their own forks. And this is, this is because by default, issue tracking is disabled in a fork. And, and typically this makes sense because we want to have one place where we track all the issues. Um, yes. Any comments? Um, well, yeah, okay. So 
yeah so we just want we want to have one place for all the issues we also want the owners of the original of the um well of the main repository to notice the issues mm -hmm. and they will probably not look at our fork of the repository yeah if you really want to, you can enable issues in a fork, but typically we just want to have one place. Yeah. Because Same goes for pull requests. So there mm. are no, there is no pull requests tab in the fork either. Mm. That also makes sense. Yes, there is another thing that is new here, and that is maybe I will open up. Maybe let's start with this one here. This is actually not about Otako, but it's about because this contributor noticed that we had a, we had a mistake in the in the README. So this okay, there is also a recipe, <clears throat> but there is also a fix in for the README. Whether it was a good idea to put two different changes into the sample request is another discussion. But it's these are both really good changes that we really appreciate. So this is good. I would like to have that merged. What is interesting here is that um, you can cross-reference an issue in a commit message. You can also do it in the in the pull request title. And that's nice because now when I review it, I can browse it and I can go in there if I click. It will take me to the to the issue, and I will do that in my. I will I will do something here. Hopefully, not too confusing. I will open up the issue. Which one is it? It's the issue number two. So both of them are cross reference. In the issue, I can see that this refers to the commit. The commit refers to the issue. And. The, the really funny thing is that if I now, or let me thank, thank you. It's always nice to give a bit of human touch. Or uh, if I now merge this, have a look, look at this green open. What what will happen to it if I click on the button? It will automatically close the issue. Be why was that? Because there is this magic word. So there are a couple of magic words like close, closes, fix, fixes, and GitHub understands this. And what is so good about this is not that I saved two seconds moving the mouse pointer down and closing it. The good thing was that it gives issues a really well-defined lifetime. And if I later, maybe, maybe I hit the same issue on my computer or in a different project and I read about it, I can find out from, from when until when did it exist, which commit fixed it. Do I have this commit in my branch? Yes or no, I can find out. So it's really good to do, to do this cross-referencing. So I can close this again. What else should we point out? Um, well, there are my uh, pull requests which break, uh, well, not break, but I mean, they, um, well, they, I guess the word is break. They break the tests. The test, yeah. tests don't work for my pull requests. This one. And if I want to know why they, why they fail, I could go into details. Not sure I want to go there now. I could click here because we will talk more about testing next week. Yeah. So this would be another mechanism. I mean, the test here was silly, but this would be another way of asking Yano to maybe make some changes and restore it. Mm. But it can it can help making sure that, so the test can help us to make sure that we preserve whatever we define as the working code, working project. Um, okay, there's one more thing that we should do before we end. Oh yeah, right, right, right. Or two things, but... Um, yeah, I should merge more. Yeah, right. Good point. Let me merge some more because I know what you want to show. So this is also pretty cool recipe using the force. Let's merge that. 
Thanks a lot. And let's do maybe this one here. And sorry for being so selective here due to due to time. We like this one. Let's get that in. Okay. And now the uh, what we want to show now is that a couple of recipes are here in in our central repository. But if if I would go to to Janos Park, where are you? Here are you. Uh, there. You don't have them because they didn't autom automatically synchronize. So maybe you can take the screen and yeah, you can now update I, your fork. I'm taking over the screen. There we are. So yeah, what you see here is, um, well, not my fork actually, but the um, original repository. Uh, so I will go to my fork and uh, it's missing the new recipes. It's in fact telling me here it's seven commits behind the original repository. So um, it's actually much easier these days in GitHub to um, get these changes. What I will do is click this fetch upstream. Um, so I will click fetch and merge. I could also first compare and see what the changes are. But I trust that the master branch is in good condition. And yeah, there will be no conflicts. And there were no conflicts, so good. Um, so now I have all the new recipes here. The other thing is, um, if I go to my terminal here, um, git status will tell me what branch I'm on. I'm on my, my new recipe branch. So let's check out the master branch. And I do not have the new recipes here either. So since I have, uh, since my uh, fork is now up to date, I can pull from origin, but I don't actually need to type origin. It's set up, so I can just type git pull and I will get the new changes. Okay, so here are the new recipes. Okay, so that's just, they, they are separate repositories. We do need to do a couple of clicks and uh, commands to make sure that they're up to date with the, um, with the main project. And now that I'm up to date, I could start working on a new feature. Mm -hmm. The other thing, um, since I, I mentioned two things, the other thing is just to wrap up. So what are the key points here? What's the main main thing about this workflow? Uh, it's really good to take the step back and um, show the big picture. The big picture of all of this is, is learning, collaborative learning. Oh, we showed you a couple of technical things and, and then we said that, well, we want to look at how the commit messages look, are the tests, is there new documentation, but it's not really about, it's not only about quality. For me, the main thing is that it's super cool learning because two people know about the change or both the submitter and the reviewer learn from each other. I learn a lot from people reviewing my changes. It can it can be great learning to even look at look at your favorite project that you are using your favorite library and look at how how do how do people discuss in pull requests and merge requests how do they send changes how do they ask for review what is the process you will learn not only about code review but you will also learn about programming because then you can step out of your bubble you can see how do other people program how oh, they use this interesting function that I never heard of. Oh, there is this library that I never heard of. It's really wonderful learning. We can also maybe go to the lesson material and point out that we have this extra episode, which we don't have to go through because many things we have mentioned uh, during stream. A bit to, uh, yeah. We have this how to contribute changes to somebody else's project. And it's a summary. It summarizes um, many things that are here we have mentioned uh, and if i would pick one one thing out of this is that for if it's a trivial change it, it's a typo fix send a pull request if it's anything more than trivial it can be a good idea to open an issue and discuss it at least inform others that you plan to do it 
the other thing I wanted to say is that, which might have got lost, that we, we have used today a lot GitHub, but there is also GitLab and Bitbucket, and everything that we show today exists also on GitLab. It has sometimes a different name. So GitLab calls, calls it merge request. GitHub calls it pull request. Yeah. But all of it works there similarly. Everything you can do there as well. It's a slightly different language, but uh, it's, it is doing the same things. Um, yeah, I think, um, yeah, I guess, uh, so this is, we showed a lot of things of, uh, we, we showed how um, technically to, to um, contribute to projects. Um, and of course, these are collaborative projects. So it is important important and maybe even the main thing um, to actually have discussions with people and work work together on um, and talk together about the, uh, the direction of the project and um, uh, yeah before you start working or be, before you spend a huge amount of time on working on your own in a uh, towards one particular feature and maybe there is an easier way to do it maybe it's already there but um, in some different form, or maybe it's something that you need, but nobody else needs, and then you write it for yourself. What is a good way to contribute to other people's project if you are new to programming? Um, one, one way to, to contribute is that you start contributing to documentation. Yeah. Or you go through the tutorial and you see that tutorial can be better, you contribute to the tutorial, or you find out there is no tutorial. Um, then th that can be a good first contribution. Maybe your first walk through through this program, through this library, and you can contribute tutorial. I think the, the maintainers will be very happy about that. That can be a good first step. Tutorial documentation, and later you can also have new features and suggestions. And um, many projects also need help with translations. If you're listening to this in English, but you're not an English speaker, you already know two languages. So um, you can definitely help with translating the documentation. Um, and you know that way, allowing more people to use the project. Yeah. And we have two minutes left. And also thanks a lot for already submitting our feedback. Well, today there is quite a bit more Negative feedback and positive feedback, we really appreciate. Uh, one thing that stands out is that it seems that time for exercises was way too little. So we need to readjust. We have been, it was the first time that we tried to accommodate, make everybody happy. And it seems that that was really confusing and we need to streamline. Make clear what happens before exercise, make clear what happens during, give more time and unconfuse. So uh, many lessons learned for us. But hopefully there was also some good parts there. Um, we, there will be some things we did here on stream during the exercise break. Uh, this, you can find that in the recording. It might be worthwhile to rewatch some. Our exercise steps, they are very detailed and very explicit, but I understand that it's impossible to re even read it during the 15, 20 minute exercise, but might be worthwhile to go through these Again, on your own, team up with others, involve us, write us, ask us for code review, we will help out. Any final comments from others here? It was quite a learning experience doing this. This is the first time we've done this lesson, which is so widely distributed and collaborative yeah. in the live stream style. Yeah, I mean, and it wasn't perfect clearly, but I'm actually kind of surprised at how well it worked. Because we, we did get yeah. um, successful uh, pull requests and issues in our, in the visible repository. And I assume also in the other one. Yeah, it was difficult to watch all these things. We will catch up with everything that we missed out. Yeah. And yeah, next time we know better.
Yeah. So next week when we begin again, so we're sort of changing topics. So it's not directly these Git related things, but we go to more things about using programming. So having the content environment installed is very important. So we still do use Git, but it's more Git is used to do other things. So it's more practice. It's like sort of practice using Git while also learning something else. So if you feel very confused today, don't worry. Next week starts again on another track and it's easy to join there. Yeah. I guess another an interesting question I'd have, would you rather like more instead of all the teams setting up their own repositories to do things, would it be better if everyone was following our central repositories? Could that make things faster? In part mm -hmm. of the complication, of course, is that there were two ways of doing the exercise, depending on if you're in a group or if you're in live stream. Yeah. I mean, let's see what people think. Uh, so they have, please comment on the hack and does seem like that might be a part of the problem. Yeah. Anyway, let's see if there's any other questions to address down here. Um, yeah. I wonder if there's any questions from up above we should be answering. Translation. Git push origin without a branch. So yeah, there's different default behaviors, which are also configurable. Also git push without any arguments, not even origin, will mm, have some default behaviors. The differences between GitHub and the other platforms. So I'd say they're all pretty similar. GitLab is very similar. Is Bitbucket and other things similar with forking and pull requests? Bitbucket does have, I think, all the same features. No. Okay. Yeah. And so even though we're teaching with GitHub, once you know the concepts and have done it once or twice, it's very easy to take it and directly apply everything to the others. Uh, we're also thinking of offering this lesson both in GitHub and GitLab, but then there is another way of adding even more confusion. So we don't know how to do it in a non-confusing way. Yeah. I guess we can tell people to practice by contributing to the lessons or tweeting from the code refinery, Twitter, or things like that. There's lots of opportunities like that. It would be wonderful to see pull requests towards the lessons. Also, one way to contribute is to open an issue, something you see wrong that you either don't know how to fix or have no time to fix, yeah. Yeah. So to open and inform others. There's this interesting question here. Cannot see the issues tab in the fork repository. And that's because by default, GitHub assumes that when you make a fork, most of the development is being concentrated on the upstream one. So they're turned off by default. But if you go into settings, you can turn them on again. What if you fork a fork or fork or so on? 
yes, that can be done. And if you go into the list of forks, you can see what's forked from another fork and so on. Fork from the command line. So there's a GitHub command line interface that lets you do that. But since forking on GitHub is a GitHub concept and not a Git concept, a default Git program doesn't know about that. Should we finally wrap up by comparing what we did yesterday to today, the different levels of Git again? Or did you already say that? Like when you're alone, when you're in a small team, and when you're working with the world. Yeah, I guess we didn't tie it back to the last uh, two days. Yeah. So, yeah, what we've been doing in the, in the last two days has been mainly about what you do when you're working alone and just with a local repository. Of course, so even if I'm working alone in a project, I do actually create a repository on GitHub for it. Um, but then, at least in the beginning, um, you might just push directly to the master branch on GitHub. Mm -hmm. um, and then later, maybe when uh, you have kind of finalized the project, if that ever happens um, in, in research, it kind of often just doesn't. <laughs> but mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, there never is an actual ready product. It's always under construction. It's always a research project. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so at some point you might want to decide that now the master branch is the official release and uh, you want to use a development branch and then merge that to the master branch only when you are creating a new release. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. But then the, if you are if you are the only person on the pro working on the project, it doesn't get more complicated than that necessarily. Yeah. Um, I guess it's worth saying that the vast majority of the projects which I do are very small things, basically things I'm doing myself. And for that, it's just a simple recording to the default branch directly and not even bothering to do other things. Although sometimes for my own things, I do make pull requests there. So that way I can do the test before merging things. Yeah. Okay, so then if you have a small group, what changes? Yeah, then in a small group, um, you do need a central repository. Mm -hmm. um, so GitHub or whatever you use, GitLab, um, is no longer the just a place where you store it in case your computer blows up. Um, it is the official place for where um, the, how do I say, not correct necessarily, but um, well, it's the official version of the code. Mm -hmm. So people work on it and this, I guess, two versions. So maybe you are in early parts of the project and you and the group is pretty small and you can still just push to the master branch or you have like one branch per person and you everybody keeps merging back to the master. Um, so yeah, that works. Um, and then if um, it is a good idea to do code review and um, that allows you to learn from each other and keep track of what everybody else in the project is doing. So if it gets to more than like, three people, mm -hmm. it's probably a good idea to start doing um, pull requests to the main branch and um, doing at least some code review. So mm -hmm. not merging your own changes. And I guess that and also- I think that's the level where most of well, well, most of my collaborative projects are. Yeah. I guess that's true for most people. And I guess if you're ever not sure if something's a good idea, that's the great thing for pull requests. So you don't have to be completely confident before doing anything. Mm -hmm. You can make the proposal and then learn as you're doing it. Now, of course, if it's a small group, um, especially if it's a local group or you have weekly group meetings and so on, then you might want to suggest an idea there before you start mm -hmm. working on it. Mm -hmm. um, Good but point. Yeah. The other way of doing that, if you don't see the people uh, regularly, is to create an issue 
and talk mm -hmm. about it there. Yeah. Okay, then the last level, so a community project. Yeah. So this is something like the current code refinery website, something or even larger, um, like a com uh, commonly used library. Um, I keep mentioning NumPy as an example. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, huge project. And then there probably is a core team that may or may not use the centralized workflow um, where, but, but probably always on a branch. So there is always the official version of the code that's in the master or the main branch. Mm -hmm. And then there are these development branches. Often you have actually a, um, a release branch, which is either main or master, and then you have a development branch um, that all the pull requests should go into. Um, that's one option. Yeah. I think what is um, important that even in big projects, it's it's good if nobody is more equal than other people. So even the even the owners who have been there from day one, everybody goes through a pull request. Yeah. So that's that's really good. And then there is a core team that has that is that has write access. And then there are lots of other people who send occasional pull requests from the outside. And over time, maybe some people will stand out, some people will send more pull requests, and they are really, really useful pull requests. And then you can encourage people, hey, maybe you want to join. Maybe you would, you would like a right, um, right access, and you can, you can invite them to join the organization or core team. And this way, include more people and uh, share, the, share the ownership. So yeah. in a... In a, especially a big community project, most contributors will only contribute once and most contributions will be issues. Uh, so I ran into this bug um, and you never hear from them again. And that's a valuable contribution. So um, it, it's kind of um, easy to get into the mindset where somebody is just using the software, they're uh, not contributing, but I mean, they are. If they run into a bug and go through the effort of actually submitting a, uh, a report about it, uh, just putting the uh, bug report um, in an issue, that's already very useful. And yeah. then it's kind of um, um, a logarithmic curve, kind of. There's some um, people who are less and less people who contribute more and more. Um, and I mean, those are the people who maybe they need their need a specific change for their own work, and they work on it for a while. They submit a pull request, and then probably never get back to the project. And of course, those are extremely useful. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So should we wrap up then? And give thanks to everyone who was here, and we will hopefully see you next week. Yeah. yeah, and thanks, thanks for, for all the feedback. It's really useful. All the feedback, all the helpers, expert helpers, exercise leads. Thanks so much for all the very useful constructive feedback. Yes. Okay. Mm, bye then. And if you haven't yet, please answer the feedback. See you next week.